All right, it's gonna make a nice thin line. It's gonna just, there we go. Nice, thin, crisp little line. Hi, welcome to Paint Coach. I'm Chris Fornatero here to help simplify oil paint so you can get better faster. So recently I've noticed that some of my students are having difficulty creating thin lines with oil paint. There's actually many different ways to achieve very thin lines when painting with oils. And today I'm just gonna show you a few ways that I go about making thin lines when I'm painting. All right, before I get into that, I just gonna let you know that I have an update with my Patreon page. If you weren't aware, I have a Patreon page that has full real-time video painting tutorials. And I've recently added a new feature to that, which is a private Facebook group that anybody who's a patron of mine can access that Facebook group, post their work, get comments, comment on other people's work. It's just a great way to form a positive community of painters, you know, trying to learn and get better. It's also a great way for me to communicate with you and figure out exactly what you need in the tutorials, you know, ways for that I can make the tutorials better. I can figure out, you know, what you want to learn, what you like to paint. It's just such a cool thing and I'm so excited to see everybody's work. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, you've probably noticed that this is the first video in a long time that I'm not wearing a hat. I want to know what you think about it. Did you recognize me? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Let me know in the comments section. All right, let's jump onto the canvas and paint some thin lines. All right, I'm going to show you a couple ways I like to make very thin lines when I'm oil painting. First one's just gonna be using a very thin brush. This is a Rosemary Co. Ivory Rigger brush, a number two. And it's uh, synthetic bristles, so they're you know pretty stiff. It's gonna keep its shape. It's gonna be very helpful for painting a thin line when you need it. And I'm getting some blue here, and I'm just mixing some a little bit of paint thinner in it. You can use medium, you know, whatever you're using to thin out your paint, because you're gonna want the paint to be flowing uh, pretty well. For this, like you're not going to want the paint to be very thick or chunky. I'm kind of spinning my brush as I kind of pull the paint out. So I load my brush up here. I don't have any chunks or anything in my bristles. And I'm going to be able to get a very thin line. And the harder you press down on the brush, the uh, thicker the line's going to get. So I can press down and get a really thick line. And this is very helpful when painting trees. So say if I have like a tree branch here, it can start out thick, then I spin the brush, press lightly, light, lighter, 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 until I get a very thin end of the branch. So again, pressing, letting up, spinning the brush, still letting up, nice little branch. Do that again. So it's a lot about how much pressure you put on the canvas with the brush. And Again, this, the paint's gonna have to be relatively thin, uh, which means this might be tough to do towards the end of the painting when you need to be using a lot of thick paint. If you're painting on top of a bunch of wet, thick paint, this might not work that well, but I'll show you later a method that works well over top of thick paint. I also use this uh, ivory rigger to sign my name on my paintings a lot of the time. Let's choke up on the brush here. Get nice, thin lines. All right. All right the next method I'm gonna show you is that is good for thick paint at the end of the painting. So if you need to get some thick paint, you need a uh, thin line using your palette knife is gonna be probably the best way to go. Uh, the only downside of this, it's kind of hard to get a curved line if you need some, you know, curved or, you know, any, you know, this is good for straight lines. I use a lot of I have power lines uh, in my painting, this works. So I just pull out some paint and then I just load up just the edge of the brush, kind of just cut my brush into the paint there. So it's just on the edge of the brush. And then I just pull it along. Again, it's good for power lines or, you know, if you're doing a boat that has a bunch of, uh, you know, ropes and stuff and it's on the sail and everything, this could work well. It also works well if you're like doing the edges of buildings, you can, you know, pull it down like that. It's a good way to have like a, a straight thin line and then pull it down if, you know, you're doing 
you know, sometimes windows and buildings, this can be helpful. Or if you just got an object or you got like a line like that and you're, you want to thicken it up and straighten it out and you can go over top. Something like that. I'll do one more. You know, like I said, it's hard if you, if you want like curved lines, it's a little tougher, but really good for straight thin lines. All right, this next method is probably the one that I use the most often. I'll make a little orange here so you can see it better. Um, but I'm just using a flat brush. I got a Rosemary & Co. Uh, Ivory Short Flat, number four here. Size doesn't really matter. We just want a good flat brush because you can use just the edge of it. And you can get pretty thin with it. And again, this is the one I probably use the most often because, you know, I'll be painting normally with this brush because I can paint regularly with it. And then when it comes time, if I need like a thin line, you know, while I'm painting, I'll have to stop and switch brushes. I can just load the edge of it. And so you can get a pretty thin line with that. Just barely touching it against the canvas. And you can also load up a pretty thick amount of paint. And sometimes I'll just stamp it onto the canvas. You know, if you need that for something. If you got, you know, the edge of a building or top of a roof or something. Comes in helpful. Or you can flip it, like I can rotate it and just use the side of it. You don't get quite as thin a line, but it's good size. You know, I just always like to try and, I don't know, just keep the flow of the, the painting going and not stop and change brushes. So if I'm painting something covering a large area and like I realize, oh, I got a spot where I want to get a thin line, I can do it with this brush. All right, this next method I don't use that often because uh, it's a very specific look and only comes in handy uh, for you know a small range of things. But uh, when the paint's wet, like all this is wet paint, you can take the back of your brush and cut into it and get very thin lines. And this can come in handy again uh, for like power lines or the most common thing that I do use it for is whiskers. When I paint my pet portraits, they're always a la prima. Uh, so the paint's gonna be wet towards the end of it and I can just do really quick lines for whiskers and they're faint. You know, it's not gonna be as bold, which can be very helpful for, you know, certain things that you're painting. And if you wanna get really thin with it, you can use your palette knife too. And that takes away a little more paint and will be great, you know, more of a, uh, a clear line. And I will sign my name. I sign a lot of my, my paintings uh, doing this because actually I'll use a brush a lot of the times. But you can sign your name pretty well. And it's, I don't know, it's a nice way to put your name on it, especially for a smaller painting and your name not be so bold and kind of <laughs> ruin the painting. It's a, like more of a subtle way to, to sign your paintings. But since we got some wet paint here, I'm gonna show you how, if you use thick paint, get some white here, that you can do a nice uh, straight line with thick paint using your, uh, using your palette knife. See how nice that goes on? So it'd be probably pretty difficult to do that with the, um, like the rigger or even the, uh, just using the flat brush, you might run into a little difficulty on that. So again, the uh, pal knife is good for end of the painting and things like that. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Again, if you want full-time uh, painting video tutorials and be a part of the uh, Paint Coach private Facebook page to share your work, link to that can be found in the description of this video. And if you wanna see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting. Whoa, you're still here. You made it to the end of the video. That must mean you really like it. In that case, you should hit the subscribe button.
You'd also probably like this video too. And this video. Please pick one. All right, this is getting awkward.